Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Eric Fitzsimmons, writer for Living Beyond Breast Cancer. We've been covering the ASCO annual meeting, which, like many events this year, has moved to a virtual platform. Today, I'm speaking with patient advocates Jamil Rivers, Shelley Fulnasso, Diana Koval, and Dr. Philippe Aftimos. They have just participated in GRASP, a program created by Julia Mowes and Christina Hodgson, two alumni of LBBC's Hear My Voice training, advocacy training. GRASP is two goals, to make scientific research more accessible by bringing advocates and experts together, and to give researchers an oppor opportunities to connect directly with the people they are trying to serve, to better help, to help foster a sense of urgency and purpose to their research. GRASP was introduced in, at the 2019 San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, and like everything else, pivoted to a full virtual platform for this year's ASCO because of COVID-19. Thanks everyone for joining me. I wanna start with uh, Julia and Christine um, and talk a bit about what GRASP is. So what does GRASP stand for? Uh, GRASP stands for Guiding Researchers and Advocates to Scientific Partnerships. And uh, what made you guys start this program? It actually started last year at ASCO. Um, I was just walking through the poster sessions with uh, another cancer researcher and together we went through and reviewed posters and uh, I learned a lot from her. She learned a lot from me and uh, we tweeted about it and people thought that there was an actual program that they could sign up for for poster walkthroughs. So they were asking like, where do I sign up? And we said, well, we, there is no program. So then we thought, but maybe there should be. So um, Julia and I worked all summer uh, to pilot the program at last year's San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. It's wonderful that you found that um, connection with people and that they, uh, people were so excited for it. Um, how big of an adjustment, um, especially having just kind of found your format for it, to, was it uh, to vouch it, uh, switch to virtual for this ASCO? So I think it's been, it's been quite an adjustment um, because GRASP is really about the connections that are created between patients and scientists. Um, it's much harder, as we're all seeing, to make those connections via a screen. Uh, at the same time, it allows us to reach people that wouldn't have gone to meetings. Um, it allows us to have this sort of discussion at other times, because we know that science happens the whole time and, and scientists can be interacting with advocates when they're having an idea or um, when they are having questions instead of just a couple of times a year when the big cancer meetings happen. Fantastic, thanks for sharing. Let's take a moment and uh, turn to some of, our, some of the participants who just went through the GRASP program. Um, Jamil, Donna, uh, Shelley, what has it been like to attend the conference virtual this year? Um, how have you found it? Well, I liked it. Um, it felt more personable to me where I was with Dr. Philippe and he was, it was more, it, I felt like it was more one-on-one -on -one than it would have been at a conference. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I have attended some of the large conferences and it can be overwhelming um, sometimes with all the various people. And then you're trying to, you know, really focus um, your attention on the researcher and, you know, having that um, conversation back and forth. And it can also be a little loud, <laughs> you know, when you're in the, those environments. So I thought that this one was nice because it was almost like a virtual chat. And so we had that, you know, time to really just ask whatever we wanted and really engage so we could really understand, you know, the concepts behind the research. And I'll, I'll just add that I was, um, I reviewed the posters before our, our discussion and I was a little overwhelmed by them because it, they were so technical. And, um, and I, you know, I, I kind of focus a lot of my when I met at ASCO or other meetings on some of the health services research. And, and this was like very deep in the weeds on the science. And I thought, I, I don't, I'm not going to understand this, but having this discussion, um, Philippe did a great job of explaining it and really putting the context around it that isn't necessarily in the poster and, and, and helped us to have a discussion about like these and um, how this research can be, will, can eventually be put into practice as we continue to learn more about how 
to use liquid biopsies and and um, and the other topics that we talked about. So I thought it was incredibly helpful to to get that background that I wouldn't have gotten just reading the poster myself. So I appreciated that. Great, and Shelly, you've uh, brought us into the next topic I wanted to uh, uh, get into, which is how much does a, a program like GRASP, how do you think it um, um, enriched your experience uh, this year, uh, as opposed to um, if you've participated before, or if you just had to view the science uh, without the context you've gotten in this program? Oh, I think, um, you know, the virtual setting, like I said, it kind of gives you that opportunity to really hone in on the concepts of the individual posters and having that close opportunity to ask those questions one-on-one -on -one versus feeling compressed for time in a very, um, you know, compressed setting with so much going on. And, you know, um, it really, with that conversational style, I think was helpful to really think about, you know, my own personal experience living with NBC and how this research can move forward or impact my treatment. I agree with Jamel. It, it brought up feelings inside because living with NBC is so, it, it, it's a way of life and to learn different different things that are happening right now, different studies, and to be able to connect with the first poster that we dis, uh, we discussed and knowing that there are different things to do now with the liquid biopsies I never even knew about. So I was grateful to be able to be part of this and learn more and be able to ask him questions. So it was very helpful. Do you think uh, having this walkthrough uh, with these specific presentations uh, will help you to understand other, present, uh, other studies as you uh, become more familiar with the terms and the way they're presented? Yes, I feel like it would. I feel like the terms that we, he used today helped me understand more. <laughs> so I think for future reference, it would be beneficial for us. Dr. Aftimos, I want to bring you into the discussion as well. Um, what did it add to your experience to uh, work with and hear questions directly from advocates in this kind of setting? I mean, this is my second GRASP experience and uh, I'll definitely sign up for, for a third or, or a fourth. I mean, it's, it's enriching uh, for everybody. I think it's an educational experience for the patients, the advocates and, and the scientists. Uh, we should never forget that, you know, all the science that's being done, the grants being written, the studies being performed, they have one goal, just to improve the care uh, of patients. So it's important to um, have the patients and the patient's advocates uh, learn about uh, the results. They are not just pro providers of samples uh, and data. So when you have them at uh, meetings and definitely even for scientists that are subspecialized when you, you learn about the um, research of other people in, in other settings you would not understand even though you have the training for that so it must be very difficult for the for the patient advocates and for us it's it's giving back but also learning so um, I think it's Jonah that said that uh, well uh, how I explained the terms I use made her understand but actually I, I learned a couple of ways to, to speak better with my patients starting tomorrow at the clinic I think it was uh, uh, Julia or, or Jamil. So I usually try to draw when um, my point is uh, uh, not getting to the patient. Now I even have learned some, some words uh, I can use. I think that the platforms we have to present uh, the data are, are, are not optimal. You know, when you, you have the clinical trials that are done, you have to post the results on clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, when you look at the data there, even as a scientist, I don't really get it because people just do it because they have to. And uh, for me, it's important to, to show what, you, what we did with the samples uh, to the patients that, that, did, that donated those samples. And for us, uh, we are writing the objectives of the research. We are uh, creating the endpoints. But we think that these are, this is what the patients want, but actually it's it's quite surprising to really hear what they want and it's enriching for, for us to do better research in the future when you really know the needs. Great, that's really helpful to, to hear and understand that um, I just on both sides. I just want to add one thing yeah. about um, Dr. Optimus Philippe. He 
was amazing at San Antonio and we were afraid that we were going to be like pulling teeth to get researchers and clinicians to actually sign up and he volunteered right away and then he even at the end of the session he's running back to his backpack and Julie and I were like we know you have to go thank you so much he's like no no I, I have to go get I'm going to do more posters we want to go review a few more before the session <laughs> ends and Julie and I are like that's just amazing. So he's, he's really um, very patient focused. And as advocates, we just appreciate that so much. So thank you, Philippe, for all you do. Uh, thank you, Christine. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful to hear your interest in it and to, to have patients and other, perspect other people um, understand that the communication barrier, sometimes it's, uh, it's a bit on both sides and everyone's trying to understand better how they reach that connection. Um, do you feel like you're missing anything from the, the in-person experience, the kind of serendipity of running into people, uh, sitting next to advocates, farmers, farm reps, anybody in the just atmosphere of a in-person conference? No, I mean, I think that's, that's my third virtual uh, meeting this, this year. Uh, I guess I prefer in-person meetings, but uh, for what I do uh, for, for my job. I mean, when you're in your uh, in your country uh, attending a conference, you are not just going to uh, empty your agenda and say that this is. I'm just going to focus on the conference. So we were working full time and just attending the conference, so we miss a lot. Um, when you travel to Chicago for ASCO, for example, we know we're there. We have nothing else, and we focus uh, on what we're doing. But for the for the grasp sessions, I I just need. I will say the same thing as everybody said. I I appreciated the virtual experience because that. Um, when you're at a poster session, you have people just pushing you around, people uh, taking pictures, people interrupting you, a lot of noise. Um, so maybe that's why we we took more time uh, last time. I mean, in the, in the hour we did today, it was really dense. We discussed a bit the data of the poster, but we were able, and I hope the advocates can confirm that, we were able to discuss further and just discuss concepts and the uh, future perspectives. And I think we managed to do that because uh, it was a calm environment, uh, it was a controlled environment, and it was uh, more face-to-face. -face. Do you miss the presenter of the poster? We didn't, I mean, even include them at all uh, with some of the posters having the video and things like that, but, but we, it's something we considered. Do you think that that extra person should be invited? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. It, it, it depends on the poster. You know, when someone's maybe working on a, on a research concept and then from a, a conference to a conference, you have updates and new data. I think there this can, this can be important. Um, but um, I'm not sure that uh, we miss the, the presenter of the poster every time. I think here, more than the data of the poster, we discussed uh, these, these different concepts and for me, this was more important uh, than actually the, the, you know, the first poster at the end, the conclusion was, well, this is hypothesis generating for the future, meaning that tomorrow in the clinic, well, we can't use this information. So what we did is really just put it into, into perspective on, on how in the future this will be important. And um, I'm not sure that a poster presenter that's focused on his own research will, will be able to, to provide you with that. I know from uh, speaking to other advocates as well that uh, the connection is an important part of conferences for them. So I want to ask some of you, you patient advocates as well, um, it, have you been able to find ways to converse and connect? Um, obviously, this program is a, a big part of that, but through social media or any other ways that you've been finding to connect and discuss uh, the findings from this year? I think the great thing about this year is because it's so accessible, you can kind of take the time to go through all of the content on your own time. And then if you do have that opportunity to converse with the researcher and share your thoughts, you have that time to really 
think about, well, me personally living with NBC, I'm thinking about my own personal situation and what could be the implications in the future and what does this mean? And, you know, even as an advocate involved with research, you know, what are the different things that we should continue to push for and advocate for? Um, so it really gives you time to really comprehend all of the concepts instead of feeling like you're kind of like in a rushed pressure cooker trying to think of everything and process everything in a certain amount of time. So it's been really helpful to have that time and flexibility to really process all the information. I, I totally agree with her. It's just, it, to me, it's easier virtually to be able to read all the information first and be able to think of the questions that I would have and how it pertains to my treatment and how I feel. So I really enjoyed this way over being at a conference. Great, that's, uh, that's wonderful to hear. And I know um, from my experience seeing that some of these tools have been seeping in um, to conferences and to see them suddenly become so widely available, it's uh, hopeful to see them become more a part of the experience for everyone going forward. Um, so I want to wrap up uh, going back to Julie and Christine. I know in 2020 it's kind of hard to talk about plans, but uh, what are your plans for the future of GRASP? So I'll, I'll address the easier part that doesn't have that much uncertainty about uh, meetings. And, and that's uh, another part of GRASP that we're working on. It's a database of researchers and advocates. Um, and the idea is really that a a researcher should, we always say they should include patients from the very beginning in the thinking of the question and all of that. And we want to help them create that connection. And we want to match them with people that are maybe near them. Uh, maybe they are uh, living with the exact subtype that they're studying. Or, um, and so, and then also from the advocate side, we want to, an advocate that is interested in research and lives with one specific type of cancer to connect with researchers working on that so that she or he can share that experience. And I can say that, you know, I think um, we're going to continue to show up at conferences, whether it's virtual or in person. Uh, we prefer the in person, but we're we're kind of getting used to this virtual setting. So um, I can definitely see that we might, we may, and, and what I like about this also, as um, the other advocates have mentioned, is that people who could not attend this conference can attend something virtually. So in the future, I haven't even told Julia this yet, but I could see us doing both, you know, where we have it in person and then afterwards we have virtual. Um, I would also love to see us expand beyond breast cancer. We did have a few uh, represent representative advocates from cholangiocarcinoma, I think kidney cancer, um, there were a few others. So, you know, we would love to expand this to other cancer groups and um, anywhere that there's actually results being published about patients and that can impact patients, they should be at these conferences, they should be a part of the equation. So it could go beyond breast cancer, it can go beyond cancer. That's so exciting to hear. and. Um... One of the, I just referenced it, but one of the positive things about seeing everything this uh, this season has been seeing how quickly people have uh, learned and adapted and all the new ways we're finding to reach out and uh, include all sorts of people. Thanks to everyone for uh, participating and sharing your perspectives on the GRASP program. If you at home want to learn more about the program and their plans for the future, visit graspcancer.org. Also, if you want to learn more about breast cancer news coming out of this year's ASCO annual meeting, visit lbbc.org for reports on major stories and interviews with experts to help you understand what's new and how it could affect you. We've been reporting all week and we have more reports still to come. Uh, thanks again for joining us.